Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be talking about a challenge from the Union CTF. So the CTF has actually just started a couple of hours ago um, and I wasn't really planning on competing in it but I thought hey let's give it a go and then uh, I tried the web challenge and actually first blooded the web challenge so I was the first one to solve it. It was a really good challenge so I had to show you guys. Um, so yeah the Union CTF I am competing with my team Dark Code. We are currently third place uh, in the CTF. And I'm going to be talking about the crown air challenge. So our team was the first one to solve it. So that's really, really cool. Uh, so crown air, uh, the description is crown is getting into the airline business to make some sweet profits when everybody is able to travel, travel again. Can you upgrade your trip? And then we get a uh, URL here. And we also get the source code in a zip file. So let's check out this URL. So pretty basic, we have this uh, check-in with a form that we can fill out and then we can click check in and it's going to send the form. But uh, we have the source code so let's check that first. So we see we have this uh, source.temp folder um, and we have some files here. So first of all, um, let's take a look at the app.js. So we see, okay, nothing too interesting here. Uh, config.js, okay, we have a public key that is redacted, a private key that's redacted and a flag that's redacted. Then we have this check-in here. Um, this check-in specifies this post endpoint slash check-in, and this is the end endpoint that we post to when we uh, fill out that form that we saw on the page. This has some uh, if statements here. It can either return you successfully checked in. Please rem remember not to post your boarding pass. You have successfully checked in. Thanks for being a Crown Air frequent flyer. But in this response here, it is going to include a token at the end. And that token is created here in this create token function, uh, which is created, which is a JWT token containing a status, and that status is going to come from this is special customer uh, function, which always return, returns false. We will always be a bronze uh, status member uh, and a frequent flyer number, and it's going to uh, be encoded with the private key. The, the RSA private key uh, using the RS256 algorithm. So that's all. That all sounds pretty good. So okay, we can we have a way of potentially getting a token if we go through this. So far, we don't really have a use for tokens, so we're not going to look further into this. And let's look at this other file here, upgrades.js. So this contains a post to uh, slash legroom slash toilets and slash flag, and that's what we want. However, we see here this get loyalty status. Uh, between brackets and this function is going to be run when we access this endpoint. So what is this function? This function is going to check uh, for the authorization header uh, which contains a JWT token. It's going to decode that token with a public key and it's going to then say well this token is not valid. Uh, it's going to return that text but if the token is valid we are going to uh, continue to the actual page. So that's what we want and then to get the flag as we can see here our status must be gold to get the actual flag so we can kind of already get the idea of this challenge we want to uh, forge a token in a way that is going to allow us uh, to do, uh, with the gold status that's going to allow us to bypass those checks so it's going to has to be a valid token uh, that we can use to get the flag however how are we going to get this token? Uh, so far from looking at this, I don't see any vulnerabilities in here. This code seems to be written quite well. Um, so what do I do when the code doesn't really look vulnerable? Maybe one of the packages or the libraries it's using is vulnerable. So let's check those out. And in package.json, we can actually see the dependencies and then also the versions. So first of all, let's check out this JWT simple, uh, which has a version of 0.5.2. So, okay, if you check that out on NPM here, uh, we see we have the README and all of that, but here we see the versions, and our version was 0.5.2, uh, which is two years old. Okay, two year old version, potentially there has been a, a vulnerability in there. So, let's start looking for vulnerabilities. So, I just Googled JWT simple vulnerability, and the first link we come up with here is going to contain vulnerabilities. So, there is a sig signature verification bypass and forgeable public private tokens. Now we see that this signature verification bypass uh, is in versions before 0.5.3, so that's our version, so perfect. So let's check that out. Uh, so it's a very, very short uh, 
text here, but it says affected versions are vul vulnerable to signature verification bypass if no algorithm is specified in the decode function. Uh, we can allow, we can uh, create a symmetric algorithm um, with the public server, the server's key as a public key. Uh, no, the server's public key as a secret. So that's very vague and, and doesn't really explain a lot, but we know that this is likely vulnerable to this. Now let's really go into that a, a bit further. So this vulnerability is also often called the RS2562 HS256 key confusion attack. So the idea here is that our library, um, so JWT uh, can be used in an asymmetric and symmetric ways. In an asymmetric way, we uh, sign our, our token with the private key and then when we want to uh, decode it again, we use the public key to decode it. In a symmetric uh, system, uh, you use the same key uh, for both. So the, the idea here is that we can change the algorithm, which is currently for a token uh, RS-256, because we saw that in the code here. When we uh, sign a token, create token, here, we're using RS-256, and we want to change that to to, uh, to HS-256, because that's symmetric. Now, what what does that mean? What If we can change that algorithm, what does that mean? Well, that means that in our decode function, which we can see here, it's going to decode using the public key as the secret. What does that mean? In a symmetric way system, that means that it's going to use this thing that we know because a public key is public so we should be able to get that some way or, or know that some way and it's going to use that as 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 the uh, the secret component so we can then we can then sign anything we want any token we want with that same public key and it's going to be a valid token and we can uh, change it and alter it and forge it it's it's kind of hard to understand maybe uh, when to wrap your head around it um, but there's a lot of good articles if you just uh, google key confusion attack you'll find a lot of articles that go into more depth um, but really the idea is that we want to change uh, the the the, uh, the thing here the algorithm um, which can be difficult however if we go back to this it's it mentions a github commit where uh, the issue is fixed and we can see here that uh, if our algorithm is not present and our uh, key here starts with begin uh, RSA public key then the algorithm is set to RS256 however before in the version that we're using that is not the case so the algorithm uh, that we supply in the JWT key is actually used so we can supply the HS256 algorithm and that way force the server to use symmetric encryption instead of asymmetric but we have one issue and that issue should be clear, the fact that we don't have this public key. And we need that public key, because if we change the symmetric encryption, then we need to use that public key to encrypt. So that's an issue. However, and this is uh, something that I love about CTFs, they really keep you on your toes. You need to be up to date in the security world. Uh, and, and a couple of days ago, I read an article that I saw on Twitter. And when I see an article on Twitter, I save it and I read it later, um, that was talking about abusing JWT public keys without the public key. So this article was posted 11 days ago. So, and it's 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 really crazy. I, I don't know the math behind it or, or or like a lot behind it, but the idea is that we can, uh, the idea is that when you have two JWT tokens, you can extract the public key used to encrypt those or to sign those from them. Now, if you think about that in a high level, that's kind of logical because a public key isn't supposed to be secret. However, in this case, it's kind of used as a secret because it's, it's, it's redacted for us. Well, using a public key as a secret is never a good idea. So uh, using this, we might be able to get to get the public key. Using the public key, we can then forge JWT tokens. However, uh, if you read this, you will notice, and if you also if you look at this short video that I have, you'll notice that to get the public key, you first need two JWT tokens. We don't currently yet have JWT tokens, but earlier we checked out the code and we saw that it is possible to get a JWT token from the server. So let's check that out further. So that was in checkin.js. And here we see um, that a token is created and sent to us uh, here. So we want to get here. 
All right, let's start from the beginning. So first of all, we need to, need to supply a body. Okay, data is our body. We're then going to J. We're then going to JPV validate our data with a pattern. So what this is going to be, this is going to do, this is going to uh, see if our data fits into a supplied pattern. And the pattern is set up here, so our data has to have a first name that is conformed with this regex, a last name that's conformed with this regex, a passport that's conformed with this, uh, a frequent uh, flyer number that's following this, and then extras that follow this format. So extras need to be an array of objects with SSSR and then these values. All right. Good to know. So we, we know that our data has to be conformed with that. Now we have this if statement that we don't care about because we want to get into this if statement. Uh, and this if statement says, okay, if there is an FPP, FFP field, um, then we are going to loop through all the extras. And for all the extras, if that extra is FQTU, then we are going to send the token along. Okay, great. So we know that we just need to change an extra uh, to SSSR FQT. You. Okay, so let's check that out. So in Postman, Postman, I have uh, kind of prepared this to send a request. So currently we're sending a request with our first name, last name, passport, FFP, and then this extra. And currently I've sent it to bulk. And if we send that request, we'll notice that it says you've successfully checked in. Thank you for being a Crown Air frequent flyer, which we expected because that's this line here. However, we want to change our extra to be FQT. U. So let's try that. So FQTU. If we now send this request, we'll see invalid check-in data provided. Please try again. That error message is from down here, which means that our validation did not work. So we did not cut, get across this regex here because obviously our SSSR is in bulk U, UMNR or VGML. Okay, issue. How are we going to get across this? Because this code again looks very solid. I don't see any issues in this code. Well, let's again look at the package used here. Maybe there was an issue in the package that we can use. So let's go into package.json. Package we can see that the JPV package is of version 2.0.1. Let's check the versions that they are currently having. So versions, currently the version is 2.2.2 .2 and 2.0.1 uh, is from two years ago. Okay, two years ago was a long time. Maybe there have been vulnerabilities. So I checked out their GitHub. GitHub. I went to issues. Uh, let's check out the closed issues. Oh, not new issue. That's my bad. So go back. Closed issues. Yep. Uh, we have this validation bypass, validation bypass, validation, uh, vulnerability and validate. So we have a lot of vulnerabilities here. Um, I checked all of these out and this one turned out to be what I wanted. So if you take a look at this, they found a vulnerability uh, that a maliciously crafted JSON can bypass the validation logics, which is exactly what we want. We want to bypass the validation logics with our maliciously crafted JSON. So let's look at what they're doing here. So they have this pattern that they sh that they expect an array. However, this passes that array. Why? Well, they pass an object with a constructor field, which has a new object in it, which has a name and has the value array. If we look at the source code here, we can see that uh, this package you checked the um, the type of what was going on with uh, dot constructor dot name, which for an array dot constructor dot name in JavaScript is indeed array. Uh, however, if we create an object that also has dot constructor dot name as array, then that is going to pass, and that's going to say true, so it passed. And that is exactly what we're going to try to exploit here. So let's copy this little part here and let's change this here. So extras has to be an array. Okay, these quotes are kind of annoying. So let's quickly change them around to be double quotes. Okay. So now extras is an array. If we send this request, we'll notice that we have successfully checked in. So we have used this exploit or this, this vulnerability to bypass that validate. Cool. So what do we want now? We wanted we wanted um, we wanted SSSR to be uh, FQTU. So SSSR and um, we want that to be uh, a, sub, a sub object from extras because we're going to loop through everything in extras and then check that thing uh, for the SSSR field. So we'll keep this. We'll start a new object here. We'll say 
SSSR is uh, FQTU. If we send that, we'll see that we have successfully checked in and we now get an actual token. So cool, we have one token. Uh, so we'll save that token. And we want a different token for that. We'll just change our uh, FFP, our frequent flyer number, to something else so we get a different token. Okay, two tokens. That is, as we saw here, enough to be able to extract a public key from it. And using that public key, we can then change the algorithm type from these tokens. Uh, because if we go to jwt.io, um, let me take this token. paste it in, we'll see that the type currently is RS256. Now we're going to change that to HS256 and then sign it using the public key because uh, this vulnerable, vulnerable version that they are using is going to uh, allow us to then de uh, decode the JWT token with that as the key. Okay, let's start doing that. So for this, I'm going to quickly going to go into my machine here. And uh, since this took a little while to run, I've already uh, got the results up here. But what I did is pretty much, I went to their GitHub and they have the script X uh, for the CVE. Um, and in the video, they showed that you need to supply two J JWT keys, which I did here, uh, two JWT tokens, sorry, which I did. Okay, two JWT tokens, cool. What is the output? Well, it's going to do all of these things. It's going to find out, uh, find a public key. It's going to then write them in two formats and give us two tempered JWT tokens. So okay, cool. Let's check this out. Let's check this one out. Uh, and to check them out, we are going to go to the um, to decode them. How does the application decode them? Well, that's an upgrades. If we go to slash flag, it's going to do the get loyalty status, and it's going to decode this token and say whether the token is valid or not. So we have a way of checking whether the token is valid or not. So let's check this token. So I'm going to send a post request to slash flag. And in slash flag, I'm going to say authorization and then bearer is our token. So now if we send that, we'll notice, okay, this token is not valid. Okay, bummer, but we still have this other token. Is this token going to be valid? Let's just check that out, paste it in, send this request. You do not qualify for this upgrade at this time. Great, this token was valid, but obviously, if we are going to decode it here in jwt.io, we'll see that we'll, we'll, our status is still bronze. Um, okay, but, but we have been able to craft a token with a different algorithm. So this is that algorithm that I've been talking about, HS256. And we were able to encrypt that with the public key that we got. So the public key is correct. And then the server tried to decode code that with that public key as well. So we know that we have, we're exploiting this vulnerability. The only part that we need to do now is actually change the payload data before we uh, sign it again. So to do, to do that, you could uh, do that uh, in all kinds of ways, but I chose for a really lazy way and just go into the source code of this, uh, of this exploit and just change the payload and code it to be status gold. Um, so that's a really easy way of doing it. Um, so I did that, I saved that, and then I ran that, and that's all the way down here. I ran that, and I got this new token. Yeah, this running takes a while, so that's why I don't show it live in the video. Um, but okay, so I have this new token. If we paste that in and we send it, we'll see we get the actual flag here. So that's really cool. I love JSON and things wrapped in JSON, and I do love JSON. Uh, so let's take a look at this uh, token in here so we can see that the status is in fact gold. And that's how uh, we kind of used three exploits here, one of which has only been written about 11 days ago, so very, very new, so keep yourself updated. Uh, and that's how I got the first blood on this challenge in the Union CTF organized by Crown. Uh, so yeah. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Um, it was kind of a little bit of a hard one. I find it, find it very hard to explain at least. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless, and I hope to see you back for another video soon. Take care, goodbye.